All right, today we're going to be flaring some brake line. And these are the tools that we're going to use, and here's the brake line. <clears throat> Let's set this off to the side for a moment. We have our fittings. There's two kinds of nuts here. One's a 3 8 and the other's a 7 16 Both of them are for 3 8 Brake line. I'm sorry, 3 16 brake line. When you get brake line, it probably is cut ragged on the end, like this is. So, what you do is, get your brake cutter, your uh, pipe cutter, your tubing cutters, stick it in there. And you nip off just a little bit. You don't need much. Just a little bit. Don't crank down hard on this. Let the, let the cutter do the work. One of the drawbacks of using this is, and there's a the little piece right there. You can see it folds the end over. We'll have to straighten that out. This is the ragged side that it came with. So we discard that. <clears throat> now these nuts fit over with no problem. That's the 7 16 and this is the 3 8 why two sizes? Because a lot of times you'll find on a combination proportioning valve, they'll have both of those sizes so the guy on the line doesn't put the wrong hose in the wrong hole. Alright, so since it's folded over, we're going to take this eighth inch drill bit and put some tape on the end of it. Just so it doesn't tear up my hands. So really I'm making a handle. Like that. Something I can hang on to. I'll take that and I'll ream the end of this. Yeah, you could do this with a drill motor. But there's really no need. Just stick it in there, twirl it around, and you'll find that the end now is perfect. I don't know if you can see that, but it is perfect. Okay. Next thing we need to talk about is. The handy dandy Harbor Freight flaring tool set. <clears throat> You'll notice on the inside I taped instructions. And really what they say is when you put the tube through this vise, you're supposed to stick it out to the second tier on, on this little hat, this 3 16 hat. Okay, this this makes a bubble. And I find that if I go up to the, the top of that where, it, where they tell you to go, that's too much material. And uh, if I just go a little bit below there, it makes a perfect flare. So, let's talk about that now. Here's the vise.
We'll open it up. And we'll go to the 3 16th size here, which is this one. It's the smallest one. We'll stick this in here. And we'll measure the tubing just below that top portion. Can you see that? Just below it. And that's where I want it to be. And I clamp it down. Okay. <clears throat> Now we back this off. Put it over the vise. Stick the hat in the hole. Center it up pretty good. So what I do is I, I cock this over to the side because that's what it's going to want to do anyway. I cock this over to the side. I make sure that these pieces are centered. And we go to it. See when you get down to the end? That's it. Now we just made a bubble. And on GM cars, this is really all they do is just that. That's a bubble flare. Okay? Well, we're doing a Ford car. We need it inverted now. You'll notice I didn't put the nut on. That was on purpose. I can always get the nut on. But I'm showing you how to flare. So we'll put this back in here the way it was. You see the bubble is formed. We'll put this centered, it up. Back. It's centered pretty well. Now we're going to tighten this thing. That's it. A perfect flare. It's an inverted flare. See? The hole is not distorted. It has full opening. Anyway, and that's it. That's how you make a good inverted flare. Now, let's get technical. I'm going to cut this off. garbage. I'm going to ream onto this. Just like that. Now the next thing I want to do is measure it. 
why do I want to measure it? Because I want to know how much it takes up. So, let's put a measuring stick on here and, and mark it. Let's say we mark it at three inches. Right here. Three inches. Right to the middle of that black line. All right. Now, we'll put the nut on. Okay. Put the vise on. That's too much. Perfect, right there. You see it? Almost to the top. Tighten it down. Back this off. Put the hat on. Center this up. Start sweeping. for the second part. Centered up. Done. Again, another perfect flare. Okay, so we have a mark on there for a couple reasons. We marked it at three inches, and now it's at, oh, about two and seven eighths. Just about two and seven eighths. Okay. Well, we want to put a bend in this. See that? If this is too much material, here's a union. It's a inverted flare union. If there was too much flare, too much material, it would never fit in there. But the cone on the inside has to meet this cone. And that's how it works. Okay. So, I'm going to make a tight bend. The tightest bend I can make. And it goes like this. These are my bending pliers right here. I put it on here. And I turn it 90 degrees. And there it is. Beautiful. Nice tight bend. So we found out the take up is 7 eighths. We have another measurement to take here. This 
is what we call the stub height. Stub height is at an inch and a half. Let me see if I can show that a little better. An inch and a half. That's the closest I can get. So, <clears throat> if you want to make pre bent lines and then stick them in, you can do that just by measuring first and compensating for it next. That's how you do it. More later.